All right. Well, since everybody is here, um, basically today we are going to do our best to be done uh, within about a little less than four hours now. Um, that is on me. So if we happen to have to cut it short, that's fine. We, we basically just say you guys make it back to town, something along those lines. Um, so how's everybody doing? How's your we're, we're getting towards the end of summer. So good because football season's starting, but bad because winter is about to begin and school will be back in session and all that fun stuff. So how you guys all doing? Awesome. I'm alive. You're, you're allowed to speak, I promise. It is okay. I just I think we just didn't want to step on each other's feet. And that's why we were all I don't dead care. silent. Ah. Exactly. Damn your food. Good old Edward. Edward does not care about your emotions. Perfect. Well, before we get started, if everybody can just take a look over their character sheets, make sure everything's up to date. Remember, every time you head back to town, you do get rid of any, um, or you do get back all of your HP, but you keep any abilities or poisons unless you spend a city hold and a little cash to get rid of them or if you happen to have antitoxins stuff like that um look at your bond see if there's any you need to update or or change or anything you'd like to add real quick and then let's take about five minutes just to get into character and if you guys have any questions we'll, we'll go from there so Speak about bonds, update those. If you have nothing to do and you just want to get started, just say that. I think I'm pretty good to get started. <laughs> I think, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, I think I'm uh, good. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep my hold for this week. Just do the... We're not there yet. Hotel. Oh, I know, I don't have anything else that needs updated or... Had been, because I'm only at 4 XP. Alright. Sounds good. Well, you all have been hanging around the city for the past month, and you've you've noticed the, the temperature has, has definitely changed. The sky is is gray, just covered in clouds daily. The, the temperature itself has dropped down to the point that there is now frost covering windows, anything metal, and um, the, the, the streets and, and all of that kind of have a very faint dusting of, of some snow and all that. And it might be because you're higher up in the clouds and the altitude, but um, looking out when you kind of peer over the edge and, and look down to the, the blue forest below, you, you see it doesn't have the foliage it once had. It still has uh, strong, sturdy trunks of the trees and, and blue pines spread throughout, but Again, all of them seem to have a very light um, hint of, of frost. It just looks cold. It feels cold. All the people that wander around are covered in, in thick furs. And uh, the the guard has basically stationed a lot of um, basically heating um, fires strategically placed around the streets to keep the ice down, but also to help those that are wandering by to not get too cold again because you are up so high. Fires! Yeah, so it, it definitely, you know, there's not a lot of um, angry or upset people. People are kind of like, this is expected, you know, it's about to get into the cold season. So we don't if we don't have to go out, we probably won't. Um, and then those that do are taking the precautions and making sure to, to bundle up and not spend too much time in the exposure. And it's still not super cold. Um, it, it's down probably around 40s. So it's it's cold, but it's not middle of winter cold yet so you guys have uh, spent some time there hanging out and and doing your things and so let's go ahead and uh yeah we'll start off with Sirak then so you've been staying at the hotel spending all your money so that's uh again for the hotel Blaza de plata about 55 minus your charisma coins to spend and you roll Plus your charisma. Eight. And on a seven to nine, you uh, you get an additional hold for city activities as you make a con another connection at the bar. 
I have a feeling that uh, your radiating blue veins are probably a very easy conversation starter uh, with the the hody toady high and rich people of, of this city. Uh, it might be a little strange, but intriguing to them. So you are, are ready to go. You said you didn't want to spend any of your hold this week? Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep it. Alright, sounds good. Go ahead and mark off your coins today. So, uh, Terrace. Terrace or Taras? Remind me again. Terrace. Terrace, okay. Terrace, I know you've been uh, spending the past month with, with Edward um, in his apartment. How's that been? It's It's been hospitable. It's been much better than the month I spent in the streets, to be honest. And considering that I have not been feeling well since our last adventure, it's been quite nice in comparison. You'll live, child. You'll live. Well, with, uh, with that apartment, you'll also be rolling plus your charisma. This will be going under the Dormito Ladrone um, section under the downtime moves. All right. It is it is a, a good place to stay most of the time, but it would appear as of late, Edward's mind has begun to wander a bit, and it seems like one night or maybe a few nights in a row, he left the doors unlocked and some bad things from the uh, the streets happened to join you in the night. So you'll need to select one from the trouble in the streets option. Because uh, again, you have lost, had stolen, or had to pawn an item. And it was a rough night, so you need to take a debility of your choice. You made a new enemy, or you spent the night in jail. Um, so one night, after I was staying ever at the apartment, I was sifting through my bag, checking my gear, and the small pouch of gold that I had gotten from the tanner's work that I had done the previous month was missing. Every single piece of it was gone. Hmm. I don't know where I lost it, I don't know if someone broke in, but it is gone now. That is definitely unfortunate. You know, it's it's a big city, but they, they try to do so good to, to keep it clear of, of ruffians and thieves. But sometimes, you know, they, they get in and Rufians. they get what they want. People that roofing. Well, Either that or uh, Edward accidentally made him disappear. <laughs> that it, he, he probably turned him invisible on accident. Yeah, something like that. That's well, never an accident. <laughs> <laughs> so you do get um, an additional hold on top of whatever you currently had. So do you know what you uh, spent your time doing or, or spending your money on? Um, for the restore, do I just use a hold? Because I, I don't have the money to go to the clinic to get um, one of my debilities removed. But... Um, because I actually have two of them right now. Mm -hmm. So how does the recovery work? It says you take three days in order to recover one debility. Um, so basically, it, if you go under the downtime moves, um, it's a little different than the, the recover is stated. Um, instead of the, the timeline, it, it does have a, a price point on it. So in order to... Uh, receive a debility it is 50 coins however you can um instead of doing that you could purchase a healing potion or or have someone give you a healing potion and using that will remove one of your debilities um i believe you're still poisoned as well um so yep. again that would be if you wanted to purchase or have someone give you a uh, antitoxin that would remove that too. Unfortunately, this is a fairly upscale city, so Medicare or medical um, costs are fairly high. Um, most people don't leave, and the only ones that t sent, uh, tend to actually need the care are these adventurers who most of the time have a lot of gold in their pocket. So I think there might be a little bit of a a scam going on in the hospitals you know the doctors kind of taking a little more than they deserve but yeah it seems to be those are the the best options there are either purchasing the 
medical ingredients yourself by getting healing potions or antitoxins or possibly having someone provide those to you. Well, crap. I mean, did you talk to Edward at all about how you're, you're feeling? Try to... Uh, I've... I've been feeling absolutely terrible, to be honest. Uh, coughing, occasionally coughing up blood. Uh, if you would have known, Edward would have offered you a healing potion. That would have been nice. There you go. Well, well drink it now. You'll be fine. All right. Uh, so I just remove one of my disabilities then? Yeah, you would remove one or of your abilities, whichever one you prefer. I don't have any antitoxins, otherwise I'd give you one. Ah, uh, so I have to- there's only one I can choose then. Alright, well, that's- that is much better, thank you. I'm no longer sick. Thank Good. you very much, Edward. Don't need you throwing up on my couch. That does make things easier. Um, but... I think I'll hold on to my holds as well. Don't think I have anything I can really do right now. Um, you can. the The poison doesn't isn't a debility, so I don't know if you would put that one on there as a debility. It, it's just in case, because oh. it sounded like um, when you're going between the two, you're under the impression oh. that the strength was affected by the poison. The the Poison does something different than directly affect ah. your strength. So if you so wanted to do strength instead of constitution, roll. you can do that. Nah, I'm, I'm fine with getting my constitution back up to zero. I don't need a minus on much of anything. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so I believe you have at least one, if not more, um, city hold. So that obviously doesn't count since the place within your, your residence so Did you spend um, your time doing anything else i think i'll uh i think i'll attempt to go back to the uh to the guys that i found last month and try to do more tanning work for them if it's available yeah yeah they they basically this is their disease season um a lot of they a lot of the past few months have been spent, you know, getting the supply, and then now it's actually in the process of getting the the coats and the, the the moccasins and the gloves and all that actually made and um, prepared for the winter season. So yeah, it, it's probably not. Um, they probably don't have a lot more tanning work left. Uh, beyond this, it's going to be more stitching and all of that. But they're. You, you had enough for the past month to uh, make yourself another 10 coins. I, th I think that's good enough for me. I'll, I'll keep my last hold. Okay. Sounds hold good. Hold. All right. Mr. Edward, you've had a month to yourself as well. So, what yeah, would you I like did. to do? Uh, I have one hold, so I'm gonna go to the blacksmith and try to sell these, they melt down these rings and sell the gold. Yeah, I think over the <laughs> the past month he he had come o over to you and yeah, okay, it's it's open. Come do what you gotta do. Giving you enough time to just toss them in, melt them down, and now you have some. Fairly poorly made, but gold bars nonetheless. The, the the shape is a little wavy. It's it's not a great not production. But yeah, it. but it, it gets the point across. How much can I sell them for? That is a good question. And how many was it that you were melting down before? Uh, four. 25 gold a piece is what I yeah. was told. So that is going to be part of the selling stuff. 
Which is where? Here we go. When you attempt to sell an item to the city, roll plus charisma. On a 10 plus, the purchaser will offer a full and fair price. So yeah, 100, 100 gold. 100? Said 25 yeah. each, and now there are four. I'm bad at math. Don't worry about it. All good. All right. And then go ahead and uh, roll plus your charisma for your apartment as well. Don't forget to pay. Yeah, I've already... I screwed that up. Builds. Okay. I used the wrong roller. For the selling. You're, you rolled against your charisma. Yeah, but I did it with the, the other one. Ah. Do you want me to re-roll? Um, yeah, 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 go ahead and re-roll. Okay. Oh. Um, in that case, he's going to offer you 50 gold. That's fine. I'll take that. And then, yeah, roll uh, against your charisma again. This will be going again off the Dormito drone. And, huh, bad news. Whatever... Whoever, whatever, broke in, snuck in, was living in your apartment that uh, stole from Terrace has also done something to you. What was it? He stole my robe. Oh, jeez. So, what have you been wearing for the past month that uh, poor Terrace has had to... I've been deal? basically wrapped up in a sheet. <laughs> it's uh, like a toga. Wrapped up in a <laughs> I see Terrace is laying there thinking he's probably hallucinating watching like this this feeble character try to impersonate a ghost. Uh, would it surprise anyone if I said this I've seen something like this before and I'm not <laughs> I just look away. Like this 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 I'm is not what they do. with this crap again. Old men. It, yeah, it happens. Stole my robe. What a jackass. Hmm. Well, that's that's unfortunate, especially because it's getting a little cold outside. So that's 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 the last straw. Yeah. Well, as the uh, the uh, what what time do you guys plan on on leaving? Probably early in the morning, I would assume. So, Sirak, you're you're the first one to to mention this this bounty. Um, you've heard that there's a, a horse thief that has a bounty tied to him. Um, who who did you hear this from, or what's the details? Well, Why do they want this guy so hotel, bad? Well, I was just you know minding my own business, and I noticed kind of like around their little bar area that at the corner in the very back. There was this guy just like hammering alcohol. Like he had like three bottles in front of him. He was he was pretty far gone. And I went over and asked him how he was doing. And he basically could only say someone stole my horse and kind of pointed in the direction and then passed out. Yeah. You you can tell this this guy was um a merchant of sorts. He had a very like colorful outfit on. He had one of those hats with like a feather sticking out of it. And you can just tell he probably had some money but not with him. It, it's like the guy that likes to keep his money in a bank secure but still look the part. Um So yeah, he he points you in that direction. Uh, Terrace, you obviously had a conversation with Sirak, and he's like, yeah, there's this horse thief down there, and, and you're a, a good tracker, you know, you, you kind of know your way, so who did you really go speak with to kind of get a better direction of, of which way you should be going, or um, see if you could get some more information about whoever this horse thief was? Well, considering that he was drunk, I thought first off that maybe he was at a bar or something around town maybe I could talk to someone that might have seen him while he was still somewhat sober when he was talking about this mm -hmm. 
Well, you you find out um, that yeah, this this guy is definitely a, a merchant from um, the the city in the south, uh, Port Crane, as you, some of you may have heard, is um, a city run by Kenshin's um, homeland folks, his his family of of sorts, and so he's one of the the merchants that actually travels between them and and up north. Um, he's he, he was probably in the in the process of doing one of his last runs because once it gets too cold, it's really hard to to travel that route. There's just a lot of snow and ice, and you have to go through mountains, which is just too treacherous for um, folks to to go through. Um, he actually had a fairly famous horse. Um, there there's some horse racing that's done somewhere kind of in the the plains towards the, the center of, of the, this continent, and his horse has actually run uh, many, many different races there and, and won quite a thrill. It's, it's quite a few. It's a very quick horse. Um, it, its name is actually Lightning. Um, he's not very good with names, but that's what he calls it anyways. Um, and his name, he, he's not a knight, but he does call himself Sir Hermione the Keen. I, I don't quite know. Um, where he, he gets this name, but that is what he calls himself. So as you guys get up in the morning, and you have a, an idea, we're, we're going to have to go this direction. Um, who's the, the first at the, the stairs in the morning ready to go? That's probably me. I The fact that a horse was taken, just straight taken from someone... I don't care about the person that actually owned the horse, but I'm aggravated that the horse was taken, so I'm riled up for this. So you you get there first, and you can see, again, the, the few guards that are up there, they've added some furs and stuff over their, their gear. Um, they, they have some good leather gloves on, and they're all kind of standing around these, these campfires just to keep warm. Um, and again, you look out, and it, it's just an eerie view. It, it almost reminds you of the situation you were in uh, last last month, where it, there's just not as much color a, as normally this land has. It's it's just kind of gray and and doled out. But you can tell there's still the the blue barrier down below you. The blue pines really stick out amongst kind of the the barren um, oak and and ash trees that are around there. But as you're you're hanging out, you again you, you just get this feeling and you see another omen. What what is it? It's it's a squirrel that's that's digging into the snow trying to store the last of its food for the winter. It's it's definitely a sign that the cold is coming and that things are changing when you see something like this. Mm -hmm. um, kind of just to take caution, be prepared yep. kind of situation. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Squirrels. Well, who would be Dude, the, uh, the squirrel, second man. to arrive then? Edward's going to bumble his way down the stairs and his, and his, well, you guys are still up. Sheets. You haven't left yet. You're you're still up in the city, like before you. you oh go down. well, I mean down down my apartment stairs. Okay, yeah, Edward. It, it's it's too it's, cold it's for just a, a sheet, but I have a feeling you're walking around like doing um precedent whatever the. Yeah, I'm kind of like I'm, doing like little flame in your hand and like trying to do really tiny fireballs like on the on the street, which are causing larger explosions than they should but you're like this is keeping me warm people are just staying away like the streets are clearing as this bumbling man in a in a robe made out of bed sheets wanders down the street um a as you get to the, the gate you see Terra standing there Terra, have you changed your clothing at all now that it started to cool you look the same way yeah i i didn't bring many clothes with me so it's still my cloak, although I have my hood up this time. I've got it more wrapped around me, so it's kind of covering my body and insulating myself. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you guys have seen each other pretty much every day for the past month, so... Um, Edward, you finally arrived there. And then, Sirak, you're, you're the last to arrive. And, right, uh, that hotel is toasty. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't want to get out of bed. You're 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 tempted to want to change forms into a wolf, but you know that's just a little too and doesn't work very well in the city. Not that people are necessarily going to kick you out, but magic in the city, eh, it, it's a little sketchy. Um, so you arrive there and you see Terrace all set up. He's got his hood up. He, he looks pretty nice and toasty. And standing next to him with a very light shade of blue covering his skin is Edward in a bed sheet tied up like a toga. It's too cold for this. Explain me why you didn't get another cloak while you were out. I don't need another cloak. I have clothes at the college. And why didn't you go to the college before we came here? Because I am going to the college now. I just came to wish you all luck. Huh? I'm not going. It's too cold. I'm too tired and old. But, but I mean, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand Terrace a bag of gold with uh, three hundred gold in it. You and the little one can split that. I'm out of here. Done. I'm. I'm reluctant to see him walk away, but I peer into the bag, see the hefty amount of gold, and I just, I almost drop it in the amount of shock that I'm in. Yeah, Sirac, what, what are you doing? I'm not really that awake right now. <laughs> you just, whatever. <laughs> just okay well as uh edward shivers and and starts waddling away you all start hearing like just heavy footsteps coming up to you and it's just banging and clanging and, and you turn around and you kind of have to blind your eyes for a bit because the sun has finally broke through and it's just shining on this figure standing there covered head to toe in this glistening scale armor huge seal shield on one side and a long sword on the next and he just stands there stares at you and now i drop the gold what's your name good sir i am logar knight paladin of the lost Hello, sir. Hello, little one. You can. Oh, great! Another he's... person who calls me little. It's only you're only little because he's like six foot five. You can tell he's the, the armor is kind of form fit. He's he's tall and bulky. He he's built to be a tank, basically. He's, he's I, uh, I take notice of the gold on the ground and kind of start, like, use my foot to, like, try and scooch it behind me. Oh, crap, right. I've, I've been down. Uh, how, how do you want to split this, Sorok? I mean... I do believe the old one said half for each. And it's heavy. This thing weighs about three pounds right now. It's, it's a pretty heavy bag. Of coins. Is that, is that fine with you, Zorok? Um, let me see how much I can even carry right now. How much is the strength modifier to your weight carry? Um, it's depending on your class. Druid. Let's see here. It's a uh, base. Plus whatever your strength modifier is. Yeah, I gotta pull up his real quick. Druid. 
Yours is six plus your strength modifier. Okay, so it's still correct. I wasn't sure since I had leveled up. Okay, um, I can only take about 50 coins before I'm overweight. I thought 100 gold was one pound. Yes. Yep. You can only take half a pound? <laughs> yep. Then you shouldn't be able to move at all right now. You'd be encumbered. If you're at your well, limit. No, I'm not at my limit. I'm a pound under my limit. Um, I say I can... we just take it back to you could, what you I could... guess is your house, and then we can do that later. Nobody has a house. Yeah, the only yeah. one with a house just kind of waddled away in a bed sheet to go to a college. <laughs> yeah. In the bag, there's a note explaining the fact that Edward's done with everything. He's going to go live at the college now. All of his his house and everything are going back to the, the apartment block owner or whatever it is. And he's taking okay. all of his oh. worldly possessions with him. Yeah, Terrace, you you probably saw this this coming. Um, with within the first couple of days of you guys even getting back, he, um, Edward just kicked Daisy out. Just like you need to go. There's nothing for you here. Um, I gave. So, by the way, I gave her the rest of my rations and a hundred gold, so she can do whatever she wants in the city or leave or whatever. I didn't kick her out. I sent her on her way to help her brother. I didn't kick about. her out, but. I sent her on her way. Yeah. Well, I did it politely. Like, I gave her a chance to do whatever she wants. So she could be floating around the city for hire, for all I know. Just, you guys just, haven't just seen her it. since then, but you, you haven't... It's hard to tell where she might have gone. Yeah. Um, your your other follower, um, the student, is happily waiting for you to tell you all the good news, Edward, about necromancy and all the things he's learned, so... Yeah, I can now devote, Edward can now devote himself to, to doing that kind of magic and, you know, fixing the problems he's caused. Which Terrace doesn't know about, really. But He'll try. Sure somebody will tell him. Edward will, will certainly Edward try will to definitely do things. Try, but, you know, he's Edward. He might forget, like, next day and just blow up the college. Nobody knows. Quite possible. But that is, that is our first loss, um... I mean, he's not dead. He's yeah. he's just retired. Uh, for the most part, there there aren't many of you all that will probably be able to retire within the city, mostly because there's nothing for you to do. Um, most of the time, when people retire, it's to the the safety of the the far east, um, unless you have a specific job you want to do in Corazon Mundo. Hey, Edward's anyways, been there a long time, and so he gets work at the college. Anyways, yes, I am Logar, and he's my new character. Oh. Yes, Logar the Paladin. So, you guys are all standing at the the top of the stairs. Logar is definitely called the uh, the attention of the guards. They're kind of looking at him. Is that Rohan in armor? Like, he just kind of has, has that impeding um figure. You guys start heading down and as you head down the stairs the temperature rises just a little bit um probably another five ten degrees as you get closer to the ground and uh, you guys are standing now at the the base of the stairs you look out and the forest is still filled with with tree trunks and and these thick bushy blue pines but most of the other um trees are, are nothing but tree trunks and on the, the ground, there's still some light uh, foliage, like leaves that had fallen and all of that, but um, most of it is covered in just a light frost that's glistening a little bit of the, the sunlight as the sun kind of still shines down enough to make it not unbearable. But And I have no idea what we're doing. I just got caught up in conversation, and I just followed. Yeah, I have a feeling on the way down the stairs, it takes like a good five, ten minutes to, to get down. You guys all have the conversation of, you know, we heard that there's a horse thief and, you know, there's this really rich merchant or whatever that lost him. And 
where we're going to go try to find them. And we just know we need to go that way. So as you get down to the stairs, you point out that way. What way is that way? Can you swap maps? I can do that. Also, I have to. I have a quest. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do indeed. Oh. I'll have to do that eventually. Uh, which yeah, way is that way, and... gentlemen? You guys, think of that direction. Uh. Let's see. I think I'll... Yeah, go ahead. I'm a bit unfamiliar with this area, but I think I remember seeing something about the port city being to the south of us, so we need to head southeast. Towards the marshes, I think. Yeah, from where you stand now, um, looking straight ahead, you see that there's a, a path that seems to go a little towards your right goes on for a little bit of a distance uh, to your left you're kind of split between the the beginning of this barrier blue forest and then cliffs and then to your right is nothing but cliffs behind you is the shadow of the city um you can you can see ocean spawning about three or four miles ish uh, behind you all right. I think I have. I think I have it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna slay the horse thief, and bring the honor back to the the merchant. Or defend his honor, I guess it would be. Yeah, it sounds good. Let's double check that move real quick. All right, so you can choose up to two boons. What was that? Uh, for Logar. You know what, I'm gonna, of course I'm gonna take an invulnerability, but we're gonna make it to, to uh, the arrows, to uh, ranged weapons, or is that too vague? No, no, oh. um, how is that? What, what are you doing? It's basically, uh, reflexes and training, I can turn in such a way where those things deflect off my armor or off my shield as I'm attacking. It's been beaten into me so long that it's kind of a reflex. You know, if I see it, it just like, you know, then turn and it bounces off. And what kind of prayer do you offer your god to get that boon? I offer, uh, let's see, there's a list of prayers, right? Uh, your vow. Pretty much, like I, I that that's separate. Um, well, so I just want to know, like, what your. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna obtain the uh, the merchant's honor, and retrieve his horse. And so I have to take down the, the horse thief. Okay. Um. So for this, your vow. Yeah, will probably be honor in that case which means no uh and no tricks yeah exactly no no tricks no cowardice i've got it all copy and pasted into my yeah. my moves on my list so it's easier yep good can i take another bow another whatever it is like the invulnerability yeah um it will require another an additional vow. Uh, I'll take the uh, freedom from hunger, thirst, and sleep. 
Okay. Unless so for it. for that, um, you know that you'll your your vow would be for hospitality. Um, so since you obviously do not need to consume, you need to make sure that the energy that you are saving from not needing to do that is expended towards those around you to provide comfort to those in need, no matter who they are. Yep. Awesome. Well, the, the sun is quite high in the sky, and uh, the floor is yours, so where would you guys like to go? You, Halfling, where are we going? Just kind of follow the road to the south until we get to probably around the Goths camp and then kind of look for a trail from there. So let's just take a quick look here. About here, probably. It's yeah. Uh, you you guys start heading through, and and you see. Pretty much all the same. The, there's not a lot of uh, movement. Um, it seems like most of the, the creatures are, are hunkered down and, and relaxing. You, you still see a lot of uh, these large nests up above. And they appear to be empty. Doesn't appear to be any of the, the large eagles or anything like that down. And after about 12 hours of, of walking and, and wandering, um, Sorak, you start to feel a, a presence all out to you. Sirach, who are these two? Are you in danger? No, these two are friends. We have not seen them pass this way before. Where are your normal companions? Well, the wizard decided he wanted to stay at the college in the city and since our one fighter friend is not currently around we haven't seen him for a while this guy was kind enough to offer his services Terrace, you you start to notice some some movement um in the in the distance Hmm, are you sure you're you're not under any danger, Sirak? Unless there's something else following us, no. Hmm. Hey, uh, do you guys see that ahead of us? Yeah, Logar, you you notice some a few shadows kind of dodging behind trees and and peering down from tree branches. Off in the distance, it's fairly easy to spot them, um, as they're they're black figures against a a blue background. I'm gonna raise my shield a little bit and shout, "Hello out there! We mean you no harm." Mm, the big one is noisy, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's new, so do kind of keep an eye on him, but. He seems to mean well. Very well. I'm I'm saying nothing to the two guys next to me. Yeah, this is this is all being done within the the temple of his head. Yeah, so um, you you feel the the presence um, leave and Logar, you you see five of the the six figures kind of disappear and and either swing, jump, or run away. One of them still remains and kind of motionless, watches you from high up in a tree. Um, as you guys begin to get a little bit closer, um, Terrace and, and Logar, you see that there's this ape-like creature, but it's covered in greenery, so leaves and, and grass on it, and it kind of looks down. It has this vine-like bow um, attached over its shoulder, and it's just perched up on a tree and kind of watches you as you all pass by. 
Ah, what a mysterious creature. You don't have these things in my land. Interesting bow. Doesn't look like it would take much force. But wait, what? It shatters easy. Ow. As he stubs his toe on a rock. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are, are still on the, the path, and you start to notice that it's kind of turning and beginning to head a little bit more to your right. Um, from here, you can look out, and you're still kind of on the, the edge of the forest. From where you see now, there's still a few miles of um, trees and all of that. But past that, you can see a few very small grassy hills um, straight ahead of you. Um, probably, uh, it, it's it's out there. Um, to your left, you kind of see uh, a large clumping of these blue pines, but through it, you can almost see some canvas. And then to your right oh, is where the, the path kind of continues off. I can't move those, those hills. Those, uh, Oh. oh geez, what's your door? I can move those no up there, but I can't move mine. Weird. Those? I, I can I can move these here. Let's see, which one is that? Uh, terrain. Hills. Uh, hills. I think I was the one who put that in. I was trying to, I was trying to minimize it. And it exploded onto the screen. Yeah, yeah it should be able to. Okay. Yeah, so Anyways. where where you're standing now, um, you you do see this uh, strange looking flower stalk. There, there's not much of a flower head on it, um, but at the base of it is a skeleton. Mm -hmm. and then, like the flowers growing out of the skeleton. Yeah. Nope. Uh, so, yeah, it, it was at one point probably. It appears to be dead now. You there. Yeah. You're the ranger. Do you, do you see any tracks? Um, I start looking around. Uh, there's nothing normal, normally, uh, that I can see. Like Most of the tracks are either covered over by um, frost or uh, just covered over by leaves. Uh, I'm, I try looking for mud anywhere to see if there's imprints, but mm -hmm. I haven't found anything so far. Yeah, it sounds, uh, I mean, you're you're a good hunter and tracker, so why don't you go ahead and discern some realities and, and see if you're able to see anything, come up with any stuff. Well, actually, don't you have a move, I believe? Let's see here, what do you have? Yeah, I think so. So yeah, I've follow the trail. Back. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find the creature first. So yeah, let's go ahead and discern some realities and see if you are able to uh, locate anything. Okay. That's wisdom. wisdom. Mm -hmm. ah. You locate an experience point. You do. Do you actually? Want this? Yep, six or lower. As you uh, you start wandering, you're, you're keeping your, your eyes down. You, you kind of are stepping and not really looking where you're going. And when you look up, you, you see a large bramble of these very spiky vines that now separate you and, and the party. Uh, whoops. Yeah, Logar, you've you've been watching him, and he he somehow walked and then walked over the these vines, but has now found himself kind of in a a, a sticky situation. Um, they they go up to about his knees, and it's just a, a thick bramble of of these spiky vines. I'll have you free in a second. I'm gonna. Pick him up and pull him out of the, or at least try to pull him out. 
Yeah, I mean, there, there's a good probably five or six feet between you and him of just these. Oh, well. Hmm. Let's just chop through them then. How about that? You sure you yeah. want to be flinging Bramble around here? I'm covered in armor. I'll be fine. Good point. Uh, I'm going to take a couple steps back. This one. <laughs> mm -hmm. Roll your damage. This one. Yeah, you're you're able to uh, cut a path. Sorak, you're you're starting to feel something when when he cuts this though. It's it actually is this screeching pain in your in your ears, and you almost feel like he might be cutting inside you as he does this. How far did he get through it? He he was able to uh, cut, you know, basically a, a very straight slice. Now they will be able to kind of separate it and get him through. But he probably cut close to 10, 15 of these vines. Ah, I told you I'd get you free. <laughs> I'm going to come in. I, well, as soon as the, the, I feel the screeching pain, I just kind of drop to my knees. Yeah, Terrace, you, you notice the, the halfling kind of drop to his knees and he's holding his ear. Seems like he's in pain. Oh, oh, hold, hold on. You, you okay, Sorak? Ah, little one. And after a moment, I kind of stand back up and. Are you fucking? Um, I'm kind of linked to nature permanently, so please try not to harm any nature-based objects. One never dream of it. What? Okay. Yeah, what it, what do you all do when he tells you he's he's linked to nature? I'm linked to my gods. That is fine. We're all linked to something in the end. This is true. Um, has he cut a path all the way to me at this point, or yeah. did he stop? Yeah. Yeah, I got to you before, I, and then I stopped. Ah, oh, okay. Well, you guys, uh, where, where you're standing now, again, unable to locate any clear paths. There's definitely uh, footprints of things that are walking by, but based off the, the footprint itself, it seems to be from a plant-based creature. Um, the, the footprints aren't clear and defined. They're kind of just patchy. Uh, where you stand now, you have a, a few miles of the, the edge of this forest remaining and to your right you can see that the the path kind of goes to your right and to your right back um to your left the the path kind of cuts again to behind you and then directly behind you is the the forest it gets thicker within a, a few miles before you can't really see much behind that um keep in mind that each one of these hexes is six miles. There's hexes? Or there should be. If you do a... this, you should be able to check mileage. Put some measurings, okay. Yeah. So, uh, that's a hex. About, yeah. Okay. So yeah, from where you're standing, you, you can see uh, a few miles of, of this lighter um, forest and behind you is thick forest. Beyond that are some small grassy hills. Well, I think if anybody was going to steal a horse, they wouldn't come through the brambles. They would take an easy route. Yeah, you're, 
You're probably right about that. My bad. What do you all oh, wish you... to do? I get where, are, easy. where are these grassy hills? They're um, they're to your front this left. Way? This way here, like right here, I guess. They're to your front, front left. Okay, it's reversed, so over here. Got it. Right, front, back, right, left, front, left. I, I assume. That's good. You yeah, always try to uh, get your your direction senses if, if you want confirmation. What would that be? Um, probably just do another discern realities. Oh, good God! Get an idea. I'm I am not one for directions, folks. But I think we should head towards the hills, no matter which direction it is. Well, we might be able to see something over there. Okay. Hey, you all travel for a, a few more hours to to get through the rest of the trees, and you end up on these... Um, there, there's this one hill in particular, and it's not a huge hill. Um, as you start making your, your way to the, the top, um, you can see that the, the ocean is kind of at your, your front left and it just goes on a while. But looking more kind of uh, straight, you, you see a large open field. There, there's not a ton of um, growth. It's, it's all kind of covered. But you do see a few of these smaller trees kind of spread out beyond it. To your back left, there's another one of these grassy hills. And further on past that, um, kind of too far to, to get an idea exactly how far away, but you do see a third hill. Um, to your front right is a continuance of this, this field that kind of seems to, to go fairly far to your, your right back. And behind you is is the forest. A little bit down to your your front right, you see this uh, reflection, this movement of um, like silver and blue. It seems to be a few miles away, down on the ground. That kind of breaks the the gray and white of the frost. This glistening kind of light shines up. I do believe that's water, gentlemen. He said a few miles, not a day's journey. <laughs> well, if it's like wide open plains, you can see water for miles. Yeah, it seems to be kind of down the down this hill. You don't have to look far out. It, it seems to be fairly close to the the very bottom of this hill. This hill goes up um it's it i mean it's a hill that stands out it, it's not a mountain but it's it's a hill probably there run here yep. yeah and it's it's kind of like straight down from where you're facing now kind of just straight away from you there we go so you guys are at the at the top here do you want to spend more time looking around or what do you want to do uh, how much time is left in the day? Um, it's it's afternoon now. You've been out traveling for for a while, so it, it's probably closer to evening. Um, five Let's six around then. Let's see if we head for the water. Yeah, doesn't seem like a bad idea. I think Where I'm going water, to uh, Take a take a little bit deeper of a look around since there's not a lot of trees around. Okay. So from from this distance, um, looking straight out, you you see this um, the these planes go on for a while. Um, beyond them, you can see a a glimpse of kind of what looks like broken up bogs and marshes. Um, you can see glistening 
of what appears to be a, a river how possibly past that and then just at the speck of the horizon you can see what appears to be the dark of a, of a forest um, to your left you have uh, a few miles of these uh, planes that break off into a, a beachy area and then that goes into a, an inlet for where the ocean sits to your direct right you can see again the the planes go out for quite a few miles but they're also broken up at the edge with this um, kind of marshy bog you can see actual like just broken up terrain and it appears that there might actually be some kind of um, river that goes north to south there and to your right rear you can see a fairly large mountain range that goes from basically your right rear to your back and gets blinded like you you can't see it past the forest um and that the the peaks are fairly small in the distance 